Welcome to the show. And let me just tell you, if you love Star Wars, you love sci-fi, you're going to love my next guest author. He's a featured guest author. His name is M.G. King. I had a chance to talk to him a little bit yesterday, and it got me so excited about this interview today. Welcome, M.G. Glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. MG, you wrote the book, Heirs of the Champion, The Well of Magic, book one, and there are some big plans for this book. I mean, I can't wait to dive in and talk about possibly big screen stuff that's going to be happening. Mm -hmm. So MG, let's talk about kind of what the book is about. Um, it's about uh, my two main characters are brothers, twin brothers, and um, their, their father works for the kings called the Champion of the King. That's why it's called Heirs of the Champions. And um, when they're 10 years old, their father gets killed by uh, the self-proclaimed Dark Lord. Mm -hmm. And one of the brothers gets kidnapped in the process. So the, both of the brothers get raised in very different environments. One gets raised to be the follower of the Dark Lord. And one of them gets raised, you know, in the kingdom where they came from. So they, they grow up to be very different. And it's interesting because there's such a bigger message to this that they both started with great hearts and they were very close growing up. The environment kind of changed the tra trajectory of where they went, right? Mm -hmm. What would you say that bigger message is that you want that you're trying to share with the world? Um, as as people read the book and then um, as the sequels come out, you'll realize that um, no matter what you were taught or uh, how you were raised or, or what your mindset is like, uh, there's always room for improvement and change. Mm. Wow. Your love for sci-fi goes back to when? Um, 1997, when the special editions for Star Wars came out. What happened then? Uh, my dad bought the trilogy VHS set and we never knew what it was, me and my brothers. And then after we watched the first one with my dad, we were just kind of blown away. And and I want you to, to tell me how many times you've seen the movie. Um, I probably lost count. It's got to be in the thousands <laughs> by now. <laughs> That's my favorite part of knowing what we were going to say <laughs> that's got to be that's got to be like a part of a guinness book of world records or something but that had a huge it, huge influence on you right i mean you can loosely say that the bad guy in your book is somewhat built around darth vader to an extent yeah um more so the emperor mm -hmm. um but you know vader is one of my favorite villains and i try to take aspects of my favorite villains even beyond star wars to mix into my bad guys mm. The two brothers, Cedric and Cadus. Yeah. Talk to me about those, those two brothers. Um, I base Cadus off of me in terms of how he looks and uh, just the decision making he makes on, um, you know, I would, I would choose the same path he would in the s same circumstances. And uh, Cedric, I have three brothers, but I didn't really base Cedric off of anybody. Mm -hmm. But in um, the sequel that I'm working on, I base him off of my, one of my younger brothers a little bit. Hmm. What would you say your personality is that, that you would base him on, on, uh, on the one character? Are you, are you hopeful? Are you a positive guy? I mean, you look like a big, tough guy. You're tatted hmm. up, you're a Jersey guy. You know, you look like you could take care of business. You don't have to be a positive guy. You can take care of whatever you want to take care of, you know? Um, in, in the beginning of the story, Cadis is uh, somewhat arrogant because I have been in the past and you have to learn through experience that you're not, you know, the best or the greatest or the strongest and you get humbled over time. Hmm. And uh, he learns to um, tries to learn from his mistakes and become, you know, wiser over time. Wow. It does sound like there's a lot of you in him. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. Hmm. What did you learn about yourself in writing this book? Uh, learn about myself. Um, just, I guess how great my imagination can be. Cause I, 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 um, I've taken, you know, bits and pieces and ideas from other mediums, but I've tried my best to make everything my own. So mm -hmm. everyone can say he didn't copy off anything. This is all original. Absolutely. So in addition to star Wars, what were some of your other influences? Uh, believe it or not, a lot of musicians are my influences. Really? Like, um, 
the guys from Kiss, like Kiss is one of my favorite bands. And so was like Ozzy Osbourne, because mm-hmm. a lot of those guys, they were very poor and they came from nothing and they wouldn't stop until they achieved what they have. Mm. They knew it was about hard work, right? Yeah. And about entertaining. Mm-hmm. And it seems like they maximized every bit of talent that God gave them. They didn't waste any of it. You know, that's what I've always really admired about them. MG, let's talk about your writing process. Do you know from beginning to end what's going to happen? Are you taking on the journey as you go? It's a, a little bit of both, especially with the uh, heirs of the champion. I knew where I was going to head. And so I came up with uh, the prologue and I knew where my characters were going to be later on in the series. And I just had to figure out how to get them from point A to point B. And I actually didn't know how I was going to end the book until the last day I was writing it because I was making a lot up as I went. Are you kidding me? I mean, if you didn't know how it was going to go, there's no way that uh, that someone who's reading this is going to go, oh, well, that was predictable. No, <laughs> that's an impossible <laughs> scenario then. You know? Yeah, I try to come about it as um as a fan first of reading and, and uh, various forms of media where I don't want people to predict where the story's going. So, yeah. I mean, maybe people can predict some things, but how the story is going ahead and how things are going to end, I don't think anyone will see coming. MG, this is the story, the characters, the story is so big. It, it feels like it jumps out of the pages and it feels like it belongs not just in a book, not just on television, but on big screen. Can you talk to me about that? Um, that's that's one of my uh, goals at the moment. I want to get to the point of like writing full time and not having my day job. Mm-hmm. So um, I guess when um, my publisher told me when um, when the book well, well, the book wasn't done yet, I let um, people in the entertainment industry read the first five chapters before it came out. And um, agents from Hollywood caught wind of it and they really like it. So I'm working with people to uh, get a script off the ground. It's already halfway done. And um, from what I know, Netflix is interested so far, but nothing's in stone yet. Well, we're talking to MG King, Heirs of the Champion, The Well of Magic, book one. And when you say book one, that leads me to ask, how many books are there going to be? Uh, it's planned for 12 so far. in the main series. I mean, you got to think 12, there's going to be babies born. There's going to be people dying. There's possibly generations and new worlds happening, right? Yeah. The way, uh, the way it's going, I'm setting up, you know, my main characters are going to be the main characters for a long time. But as the story goes on, they get older and they have kids and the kids grow older and kind of take center stage towards the end. MG, this is kind of a sensitive question. Do you, would you write, do you write with all the colors in the crayon box. I mean, do, you know, do you do you write with the sensitive colors? Do you write with the extreme colors, the angry, the happy? You know, are you kind of more low key or, or are you a little bit more paced in a certain do you keep your emotions in check? What is the style of your writing? I guess I'm asking as far as emotions go. Um, yeah, I get uh quite emotional during some scenes like I know um like if a certain character death comes a certain character's death were to come up or if uh, something major happens that'll impact my characters emotionally, I get emotional. And sometimes I have to stop myself from writing for maybe like a half an hour before I can really. Cause I see these characters as, as like my friends, you know, my family, people that I personally know. They're from you. They're like your children. You've birthed them. That's what <laughs> in, it feels like in a way you're their God. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so, so whenever I feel, uh, whenever their pain comes across on page, it's something, the pain that I felt from creating that scenario myself. MG, this has been so interesting talking to you. I wish we had more time. Thank you so much. Share with us where we can reach out to you, find out more about you and your books. I have um, social media, Facebook and Instagram. It's just... Uh, uh, MG King author. And if you just look it up, uh, I, I should be the first one that comes up. On All right. Both great. Of them. And we got lots of stuff on the screen, so we should be able to find you. MG, have a great one. We're going to be following you and mm-hmm. I have a feeling we're going to be uh, eating popcorn and buying tickets to see your, see your books in the future. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Take care. Mm-hmm.